The Lord Zack Snyder returns, legendary Wishcaster, with a brand new cut of his amazing film, Rebel Moon. <laughs> Previously, we had a PG-13 Netflix exclusive called Child of Light, which was like two hours and some change. But now Snyder is back with a new, bold, ambitious, boob-filled version that's three hours and 24 minutes of pure, uncut, unbridled, orgasmic garbage! I was able to muster my way through two hours of this drek before I said, No, Adam, enough is enough. I get the playbook, I get what he's going for, and I don't need to take it anymore. A large part of me thought, you know what I could do? I could just put the same shirt on I wore in the previous review of Rebel Moon and just call this a director's cut review and then just splice in this new critique with the old stuff. Because if Zack Snyder can double dip and repurpose his shit, why can't I? But nay, said the horse, I am going to give you a brand new fresh review of the director's cut of which I saw two hours while fast forwarding. Let us pray at the altar of Snyder one last time until part two of the director's cut comes out. Let's begin. Before I talk about this movie, I want to point out there's going to be spoilers. I already said my piece on Rebel Moon, I hated it, and this is no better. Look, I'm just a simple space country farmer, but I would love if you could find your way to that subscribe button and harvest it so that you see future reviews from me. I post movie content, rants, roasts, live streams every week. It would be such a blessing if you could join me. Previously on Adam Does Movies Rebel Moon Rant, it sucked. But what does this new director's cut bring to the table? Well, it switches up a whole bunch of stuff, actually. It feels like a completely different movie that's equally as bad as the previous one, if not worse, because it's longer. Since I watched way too much of this new cut of the film, which is to say I pushed play on the movie to begin with, that's, that's a bridge too far, I can tell you that the first 20 minutes is completely different. We follow this family on a different planet. They're running for their lives as budget Nicholas Holt comes down with his crew, destroys the place, and the only thing that's standing in their way is a blue little Pokemon who's gonna charge up for one final attack. Alas! The little shit died in vain, because even though his explosion was impressive, the damage was minuscule. And it really accomplished nothing at all. The dude died for no reason. He won't be remembered. There will be no songs about him. He played himself. And what's to follow is even worse. Had the little creature blown up the family, it probably would have been a better outcome than what we got. After this explosion, we have a very dramatic scene play out where a son is forced to kill his own dad in front of his mother and sister with a club. And as he's bashing down on his dad's head like a cartoon caveman, I couldn't help but notice the comical amounts of blood that are flying up from the bottom of the screen. This guy had more blood in his left ear than I have in my entire body. If the drama's not working for you, don't worry, Snyder's got you covered. There's plenty of things to keep your attention. Every single frame of this movie has about 18,000 little embers flying this way and that, hither and thither. The After Effects team went all in. They had a brand new VFX motion packet and they used it to its full potential. Short for potential. What Master Snyder is doing with this scene is he's telling audiences what to expect. This is a darker, grittier, more violent film, and yes, there's nudity. There were some women out in the courtyard, stripped down to nothing, brandished naked in front of all to see. This is a hard R-rated movie with fake blood, fake action, fake backgrounds, fake emotion, and enough VFX exploded onto the screen to make even you look away from your round of Fortnite back to your computer to see what the hell's going on in this thing. After a riveting 18 hours, or however long that lasted for, we're back in a familiar, comfortable place. Planet Farm, with Korra and her strong, manly men who look like they all shop at Grunt Style. We see Korra wiping the sweat off the brow as her space horse and her tend to the fields. She heads back to the shack where she has to tend to a huge, large vegetable of the eggplant variety, if you catch my drift. I'm referring to a man's penis. We get a raw, passionate lovemaking session where that chick from the shitty mummy movie makes sweet, sweet love to some generic guy with a great beard. Now, I know what you're asking yourself. Adam, 
Is all this lovemaking going to get in the way of more harvesting of wheat and crops? <laughs> Don't worry, sir. Don't worry, friend. There is plenty of harvesting to go around in this movie. In fact, I would say there's a good 70% bump in harvesting of wheat. We see them harvest in the day. Harvest in the night. Harvest in slow motion. Harvest in speed up shots. Zack Snyder has created farm porn here. It's a niche market, but we shouldn't judge. It was around this time when a woman was also standing in a wheat field with two wooden batons and she slow motion kind of thrusts them forward. And the sound effects while she does this are like <laughs> while I'm just doing this. <laughs> and then she goes <laughs> but all she's doing is spinning them backwards one time. My children can do all of the things she does in this scene. But Snyder films it and adds so many sound effects and dramatic music, you would think that she was performing the most highly acrobatic, highly skilled movements that any human being could do. Snyder would have you believe that even Simone Biles would look at this sequence and go, Wow! How is she doing any of this? What ungodly acts of physical strength am I bearing witness to right now? After this, we get more harvesting. We have to harvest. We have to show this. It's the three and a half hour cut, people. There are a lot of changes in this film. I will say it genuinely feels like a completely different movie. Uh, although all the garbage is still intact. And even though the shots change, the recipe might add a little extra salt and pepper, the overall final product still tastes like shit. And I know what some of you are worried about. Don't worry, don't worry. Snyder did not remove that classic iconic dinner scene where four people go around the table and give their individual trauma, their backstories. Four flashbacks in a row, isn't that fun? More harvesting. Snyder gives people what they want. Action. Heads blown off. Harvesting. Naked people. Sex scene. Harvesting. Fight the bad guys. Do some harvesting. Ride a horse. Do some harvesting. Talk to a robot with antlers. You better believe we're harvesting. <laughs> we get a random scene of an older woman waking from bed. Boobs out. Sun's out, boobs out. I will say, they were impressive. But then I quickly ask myself, why does this scene exist? Snyder wrote this into the script at some point. He said, all right, we're going to start the next morning where an older woman wakes up and her, her boobs are out. She sleeps naked. This is important because reasons. And then right after she wakes up, we cut to something else. This is the entire scene in a bedroom. Woman wakes up next to a younger man. Tits out. Finn. Truly a master of his craft. The farmers take a break from the harvest and they start to dig trenches because the bad guys are coming. We remember the story. We remember the plot. Not Nicholas Holt is going to crash land on this planet and right into our hearts. He's going to demand more crops. He's going to demand more wheat. They need the wheat for something. After this scene, C-3PO kicks the shit out of some alien dudes close by, onlookers. They were spying on this small farm village town and their poor provincial life. And he was shooting the signal up to the bad guys, known as the King's Gaze. Not King's Gaze, G-A-Z-E. Not the other one. Although a bunch of homosexual space pirates would be far more entertaining than whatever the hell this crap is. I would love that. The king's gaze. The door comes down. Hey, we're here for the wheat. And that's going to mark the end of where I got in this movie. I don't know what that actually ran out to. I started fast forwarding and I was going to stop every once in a while just to tell you guys what's uh, new, what's different. But honestly, it doesn't matter. This thing still sucks. It will always suck no matter what. Because you can slice it and dice it and cut it and mix it and match it. But at the end of the day, it's a bad story. It's a Star Wars knockoff. It looks bizarre. I don't know how Snyder keeps getting worse with the cinematography. Progressively, these movies get more and more soft bloom on them. They're, they're basically Hallmark movies set in a sci-fi setting. The music's just a bunch of bullshit. The dialogue's ridiculous. And the slow motion is so egregious. Listen, it's always subjective at the end of the day. I'm just one person with one opinion. If you like it, why? I ask you why, sir. Or ma'am. Or whatever. I don't care. This is not good. 
That's the bottom line. And we got more of this to come. There's at least another director's cut. I think he's making more of these shitty things after the second one. I think there's like three or four or five coming out. But now I have to hear from you. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why Rebel Moon, the director's cut, part one, the child of garbage, is worth it. And definitely worth taking up three and a half hours of our life on Earth, our precious life on Earth, after already wasting a couple hours watching the previous one. And then the other one, the sequel! I've wasted too much time on this. Even talking about it right now, I've gotten older. I'm missing my children grow up because they're not going to watch this crap with me. I've already failed at life. It's too late for me. I've made my bed, and now I lie in it. I'm here with Snyder. I'm here with all these other hacks making these trash movies, and I'm, I, I'm implanted. But it's not too late for you. Run. Run away from these terrible Netflix exclusives. Find good movies. They're out there. I've talked about them. Go back to the classics. Or just watch anything but whatever Netflix puts out, because it's always bad now. They don't care. They don't care. Zack Snyder came out recently, said he's going to slow down, he's going to make a smaller movie. Good. And maybe don't write it, because the guy can direct. I know he has it in himself somewhere, but he lost his way. And we got to bring him back. We have to find Snyder and bring him back again. All right, after the mental breakdown, I want to just say thanks for watching the video. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. I do this stuff all the time. Clearly, I've, I've lost... Any sort of self-respect I had, and I'm just talking about Rebel Moon and, and other bad Netflix exclusives and movies in general. Let me know your thoughts. Please like the video. I would love it if you became a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, or you could be a YouTube join member, although there's way more perks over at Patreon. A lot of good exclusives, 300 of them as a matter of fact, and counting. I do also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. It's very funny. I'm talking about, I'm complaining up a storm about the stupidest things in life like getting a cardboard straw when you just cannot bother to drink out of it, or listening to their stupid TikTok feed with no headphones in. It's all light and breezy, and I would love to have you there as well. All right, hopefully I see you next time.